John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures. Series testing, successful hunting. Today I'm going to be testing another head by NAP. It's the Spitfire Max. I've tested the Spitfire before, um, but I've never done a formal test on the Spitfire Max. I took one out hunting one time and I shot a rabbit with one, okay, and it definitely maxed out on lethality <laughs> in that instance. But today I'm excited to be able to do a formal test of it. And I'm going to be using my regimen for 2024. And for a detailed description and understanding of that regimen, please check out the video I posted earlier this year called 2024 Broadhead Test Process. Process. And it'll really help you understand why I do what I do and how I compute the scores and so forth. And for most of the shooting, I'm going to be using my compound bow over here, the Elite Era that I'm really liking this year. And then for the uh, flight forgiveness testing, I'm using a crossbow. I'm using a mounted crossbow, this uh, Killer Instinct SWAT X1. For arrows, I'm using the Bishop. Uh, FOC King Arrow for most of the shooting, but the Bishop Fad Eliminator for the really hard impact stuff because it can handle it, and the Bishop Goat Crossbow Bolt. All right, let's zoom on in here and check out this Spitfire Max and go through some of the design features and specifications and then put it to the test. Here's a good look at the Spitfire Max, and it's just a classic Spitfire design that's been around for a long time, but this is the Max, meaning it has a bit of a wider cut. So let's start with the materials. You've got this, uh, this classic ferrule here of the Spitfire that's made out of aluminum, and I'm not sure what aluminum I would imagine. It's a 7075, but you've got these ridges in there that are just going to aid in durability as well as a bit in flight forgiveness. And then you've got this hardened steel chisel tip that uh, has proven over the years of my testing to be pretty durable. And then you've got these three blades. And by my measurements, they're 0 .030 inches thick stainless steel. So uh, on the thinner side of mechanical blades. And of course, it's a front deploying or over the top deploying broadhead. There's no O-rings. There's no retention clips or anything else to mess with. The blades are just held in place by friction. And when pressure is put on the tip right there, it's on this dull portion, the blades fold back like that into a pretty swept uh, angle there, as you can see, in their full open position. And the cutting diameter is one and three quarter inches. So with three blades at one and three quarter inches, that gives you a, a pretty healthy 2.6 inch plus cut to it. Now another thing to note is these blades are offset and let me show you that if you can see it here. You see how they're not uh, exactly in line, but they're offset. And that's going to create a bit of rotation and make for an extra wicked wound channel, as well as some say it could aid in flight as it gets a little bit of rotation going in flight. And as for resharpening, I would use the Stay Sharp Guide Gray Guide. It would work really well with, uh, with this Spitfire Max for sharpening these blades. The total length of the broadhead beyond the edge of the uh, of the arrow here is a 1.7 inches. So it is pretty long to accommodate for those extra long blades. But uh, but that's the broadhead really eager to put it to the test and see how it performs. The Spitfire Max got the solid 10 ring. It took 267 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a 9.33 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated seven and a quarter inches and the blades fully deployed by the time they hit the gel and they stayed deployed the entire time, but the penetration was aided by that extra long tip. It took an additional 34 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a 9.32 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated through 32 layers and the last several layers were due to that long narrow tip. 
It did very well after the three shots through the MDF. The only damage was the blades got a little bit bent back, but other than that, it's in perfect condition. Here it is after the first shot into the steel plate. And you can see the blades didn't even really cut through the steel plate, but they sure did get bent up. One of them turned into like a curly fry and the other two got really bent up as well as the uh, the ferrule itself kind of collapsed. So the blades can't, uh, can't move anymore within that ferrule. Here's the Spitfire Max after all the durability testing. It did very well through the MDF, and that's the most important. Uh, and then the steel plate, the blades got pretty uh, mangled up, and this one got super curly cued. But I went ahead and shot it into the cinder block anyway. Oh, and it just took one shot through the steel plate. I didn't want to shoot it again through the steel plate, but I went ahead and shot it into the cinder block uh, just to see what would happen. And you can see uh, it held together, but it just got pretty bent up up there in the process. So what'd you think? It was a real mixed bag, right? I mean, it flew incredibly well, um, but due to that large cut, it did not penetrate very well at all. And even the penetration that it did get was really aided by that long tip rather than the blades themselves. They're slow to deploy, and then they're kind of so swept back and away from that tip that the blades themselves are not really cutting much of the medium. And then because they're so wide, they're just not very durable. I mean, the way they, they held up to the MDF was good, but then the steel plate on the first shot, that, that's amongst the weaker uh, blades that I've tested. So, you know, it's a mixed bag. You're getting a really good size cut but you're just not penetrating that well and don't have that much durability. So in broadhead design, everything is a trade-off like that. For turkey, man, this would be an excellent head. You'd be really hard-pressed to find a better turkey head than this one. And if you've got enough juice behind your setup, uh, you could use it on bigger animals. No doubt it could be lethal. It's just not quite as durable as I would be looking for and not quite as much penetration as I would want on bigger animals. But you check out the score sheet and see how it performed in the areas that matter to you the most. See if it might be a good fit for you. And stay tuned for all the scores as well as the cumulative Lusk grade that it gets. And then also stay tuned for the list of all the discount codes that I can offer. I'm trying to add to that list as much as I can just to pass on savings to you. So take a look at it and see if it can might, might could save you some money.